Hi there, I'm Brad Rourke. I'm broadcasting to you from my basement in Rockville, Maryland. I have a blog. You probably have one too. Well, since I have a blog, I've been thinking about blogs a lot, and not just about my own. There are so many out there, it's hard to keep them all straight. There's the Drudge Report, there's Eschaton, there's the there's Wonket, there's the Corner, the Talking Points Memo, even newspapers have gotten into the act. Half the time when I'm on a newspaper website, I don't know if I'm reading a blog post or an actual article. Somehow I feel as if the rules are different for blogs than they are for actual articles, even at the newspaper. I wonder about how true all those things I read are. Well, no matter. There are so many, I've had to come up with a taxonomy of blogs, and I'm going to tell you what it is now. Seems to me there are seven kinds of blogs. First, there's the annotator and pointer. This is like Drudge or Instapundit. They don't write new things so often. What they really do is point you to existing articles at the Washington Post, the New York Times, the AP, Reuters, or the BBC. They show you what other people are reporting, and they find the diamonds in the rough. I really have to admit that I follow the Drudge Report multiple times a day, like most newspaper journalists that I've come into contact with. Why? Because he does a great job of finding stories. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Doesn't mean I agree with everything he says, and he usually creates new headlines that irk me, but he finds things. The second kind of blogger is the thoughtful responder, the thoughtful response blog. This is like Josh Micah Marshall at the Talking Points Memo, Mark Schmidt, Powerline, Captain's Quarters. These are people who take existing stories, usually op-eds or other pieces of commentary that have serious arguments in them, and make their own serious arguments back. Maybe they'll find a nuance that's missing in the original piece, or they'll take the author to task for, for misreading something or misquoting something. Maybe they'll bring in new information that couldn't have been known to the original author. In any event, the premium here is on thoughtfulness and on making an argument. These bloggers provide an incredibly important service as newspapers and weekly news magazines become more and more simply avenues for infotainment. The actual thoughtful analysis is more and more shifting to blogs like the ones I just mentioned. Now another kind of thoughtful response blog, but a little bit different, is what I call the secret expertise blog. When I think of this, I think of Brad DeLong, who is an economist at the University of California, Berkeley. He looks at current events, but he does so with the eye of an economist. He makes arguments and observations that are ones that I could never make because I have that skill not in any single bone of my body, as do few of us. But he can point things out that I wouldn't know otherwise. And he brings an interesting perspective to issues that would otherwise be lacking. Someone like him is also the mystery pollster who's an unknown, unnamed person in a polling firm, or used to be in a polling firm, who takes reporting on polls and takes it apart so that we can really understand what's going on behind the numbers. These people serve incredibly important purposes. Somewhat less important are what I call the pot stirrers. These are the iconoclastic, angry bloggers who are almost one-trick ponies when it comes to things. They'll start out in the guise of thoughtful responders. They'll take pieces that are in the newspaper or on other blogs and begin to respond to them. But very clearly, they're iconoclastic and single-minded in their criticism. It seems like their only purpose for being is to criticize others. Now, this can be interesting, but I try to minimize my reading of it, because in the end, it's not that useful to me. More useful, though, are my favorite bloggers. I call them the omnivorous essayists. They're like the thoughtful responders, but they're a little more self-contained. I think of Virginia Postrel, who writes something called The Dynamist. I think of Richard Harwood writing Redeeming Hope, and Stanley Fish writing Think Again. These are people who have very particular viewpoints, but they write very self-contained essays that 
might be prompted by something they did or saw. Sometimes they're prompted by other articles and our responses, but more often than not, they are simply assertions of an argument. And they do an immense, immense service because many of these people would not necessarily have a big soapbox in the mainstream news media. But I can read about them, I can read what they're thinking, and they can provide windows into what they're thinking for me. I love these things. I love these omnivorous essayists. I also love, and I'm sad to say that I do, I love the newsroom bullpen type of blog. Now that's like a group of political reporters, typically, or other reporters, who all are posting in the same place. The National Review's Corner is one of my favorite places. It's like I'm listening in on a conversation among a whole bunch of reporters who are, by definition, and by job description, very, very uh, in tune with what's going on right now. The New York Times has something called The Lead. ABC has something called The Note. These are very interesting. In the end, I'm not sure how much I get out of them, but I really enjoy reading them. I, I enjoy reading less so, though, the individual blogs of journalists. People like Mark Fisher, who writes Raw Fisher for the Washington Post, and Saladay of, um, of the LA Times writing Political Muscle. They have these behind-the-scenes blogs about the stuff they're hearing as they're working on their reports and articles. It's stuff that, that doesn't make it into their articles often and probably shouldn't, and if it's not going to get into the article, why do I need it on the screen? I don't know. In the end, these blogs seem to be less interesting to me just because they seem more like I'm reading over someone's shoulder and reading their notebook. So there you have it. Seven types of blogs. Annotators, thoughtful responders, people with secret expertise, pot stirrers, omnivorous essayists, the newsroom bullpen, and the behind the curtain. Later, in a later posting, I'll talk about an eighth kind of blog, which is really a hybrid. It's almost a forum and not a blog, but I call it the fringe conversation. But that's for another time. Thanks for listening. Talk to you later.